it seems that Sweden is going to get the biggest ESS project in the world, and Finland is going to get the biggest nuclear power reactor in the world. And we will most probably be the first nation in the world to uh, uh, start uh, putting uh, spent fuel into the ground. We will even beat the Swedes once, yeah. once in a time. Uh, the construction of the... Uh, I have been asked to talk, first of all, about the construction of the Finnish uh, nuclear power plant and uh, the waste storage. So I start with the Olkiluoto 3 plant being built in Finland at the moment. The construction of this reactor started uh, in 2005. It's called Olkiluoto 3 and it's built by TVO, which is a wholesaler of energy to the industry. Uh, this reactor is going to be the prototype of a prototype, because we say it's a prototype. But the French building the same reactor now in France say it's a prototype. Mm. So we must be the prototype of the prototype. <laughs> <laughs> it is an EPR reactor, a European pressurized reactor. It, it was bought for a turnkey pre, price of 3.2 billion euros from the French-German company Areva. Uh, that desperately needed this deal in order to be able to go out and promote a nuclear renaissance in the world. When the project was discussed in the Finnish parliament in 2002, it was promoted as a cheap solution to tackle climate change. We know that. It's, it's the argument they use all the time. The price mentioned in the debate in the parliament was 2.3 billion euros. It was bought at 3.2 billion euros. And according to French sources, all the delays and the technical problems, etc., to which I will return, uh, will raise the price by at least 2.2 billion euros. Then we are up in 5.5. I said from the beginning it will be 7. And I think they are going to beat me, which is quite good. No discuss in this uh, environmental impact assessment there were no discussion at any level about the problem uh, which is discussed for the EPR reactor with burn-up rates of 60 gigawatt days per ton of uranium, or even more. At these rates, the uranium fuel rods should burn for around a year longer than today's best fuel up, uh, burn, burn fuel up, uh, burn up fuel. And these high burn up fuel uses more enriched uranium and leaves it in the reactor for a longer time and it gets real hot. In the IAEA guidebook published in September 2007, it states, the higher burn-up of fuel has a significant impact on the choice of the storage option and on the design of the storage systems due to the, <coughs> to the increased decay heat inter alia, which is roughly proportional to burn up, imposing a higher cooling load to the storage system. In the new environmental impact assessment, there is no word about this. Um, in Sweden and Finland, uh, we have the same final repository model, the KBS method, about which Niklas will be talking later. So I won't go very much into this. And there is a lot of problem, and there is a lot of this debate and discussion. There is even money to debate. In Finland, there is no debate and no money. <laughs> um, but I would like to mention that uh, Sven Bengtsson, who is the highest judge of the environmental court in Sweden, uh, in Milieu Actuel in 2007, that said that the SKB will might be started, the, the, your, your repository might be taken into use in 2022-20, because there's a long procedure about uh, choosing the locality and the whole um, environmental process you have, the court process. Uh, we have no such problems. The timetable is very fast. We are there already at the depth of, of, of uh, 296 meters. Uh, in 2002, it stated that the loading will start. Okay, it might be po postponed by some five years, but yours might be po postponed by some ten years. So, uh, this is dangerous. Because if we are the first ones, and we likely will be the first ones operating, uh, taking into use a repository in the whole world, uh, we might get more waste. 
in the IAEA as well as in the European Union circles, it has many times been mentioned that it would be very practical with some waste repositories uh, at the best possible places. Uh, if you consider that ap approximately one third of the nuclear power uh, plant operating in Europe, in EU, will be closed over the next two decades, you might realize that this is going to be a very hot debate. Um, uh, per Kramer, a very renowned Swedish uh, uh, professor of international law at the University of Gothenburg, uh, he already in 2006 uh, attached attention to, to the problem that if Sweden opens a repository, you might be more or less forced to take the EU waste. Uh, the same has been said uh, by, uh, by another uh, Swede, Joran Sundqvist. He's a sociologist, sociologist at the University of Gothenburg. He said it in an interview uh, in June where he said that even if today our uh, bilateral agreement with the EU uh, uh, prohibits this, there are always ways that you can change the, the minds. And even if it wouldn't be made by directives and laws, it could be made by call for common responsibility and cooperation. And you know that this always works in the European Union. Um, considering the fact that uh, Finland produces so much energy and will produce more energy with uh, uh, nuclear power. There is also now the debate of uranium mining, as you have here in, 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 uh, in uh, Sweden. And uh, we already start with uh, prospecting in Kusamo, which is up uh, north, and in North Karelia. Uh, I was there uh, two weeks and weekends ago and saw the boreholes. And our uh, minister, Mauri Pekkarinen, who is responsible for all this, he says it's absolutely clear. If we produce uh, nuclear energy, we have also to, to do our own mining. So we have very little hope uh, that we can stop it. And uh, all this is also very much implemented in the EU treaties and in Euratom, about which uh, Birgitta will talk. So I won't go into this. But I see the Euratom Treaty as a real danger to us. What comes to uranium mining and what comes to uh, the, the, the waste. And the, the mining would maybe be problematic if we now get a prospecting showing that we have the resources, that we have resources enough. And if there then is a shortage in the EU, they could say, but you have resources. And if you don't mine them, you don't get anything from us. 